about the things of God and what you expect to receive from, from the throne during this next section of the week that we're here together. Uh, as you've well seen from Brother Gibbons' displays, uh, some of what our goals are, some of what's going to be worked toward at this time. Uh, some of the things that was in the uh, pamphlet in the back, some of the objectives that were listed here, I'll read just a few. To clarify the nature and content of the gospel of Christ, the power is here, the blessing is here, that is in the gospel of Christ. That's where our resources are. That's where the resources of God will be found. It's in Christ that God was communicating to man in the form of a man, and that's where we can better receive the things of God is through his son. The nature and the content of the gospel to clarify these things is a remarkable thing. It's not something to take lightly, especially in a day uh, when clarity is hard to be found. Another one is to strengthen the faith of Christ's brethren. That is everyone here that is called upon the name of the Lord. If the victory that overcomes the world is faith, it needs to be strong. It's very true. Uh, to have a, vic a victory over something as massive as the world, to be able to afford our adversary the devil, to be able to uh, buffet our body and make it our slave, to put down the old man, that, that requires the faith of the elect. And that requires the faith that is strong. Uh, I mention these things in particular because these are some of the things I expect to be done. Not only because I know Brother Given as a man that's very capable, a man that follows through on things he's put a commitment to, not only because of that, but because I know God is honored by these things. Because I know God is desirous that his people would know more about him, that he is desirous that his people would be strengthened. He doesn't want a bunch of uh, weak followers. He would much rather have an army, uh, an army of the elect. Another one is to produce rejoicing within the household of faith. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that's also a marvelous thing that I look forward to finding more, out, more about here in these sessions. The joy of the Lord is our strength. To be able to look at anything and any circumstance we might have and be able to confront it and overcome it because we have joy in God and confidence therein. To bring good hope and strong consolation to those that are living by faith. The confident expectation of good things to come is an imperative for sanctification. Very true. Uh, we are seeking at these times, and I expect to receive good hope and strong consolation of, the, of these things, because I'm among those that are living by faith. Uh, the things that we have here to offer this week are not based in the world, therefore they are based in the things that are unseen, and they also have great strength because of that. So all the resources that we are here to offer during these times is on a higher plane, it's on a heavenly plane. All the speakers are focusing on things that are heavenly, that are eternal, and they're not focusing on the things of this world, so we expect to gain heavenly blessings from these times to, to gain heavenly resources to strengthen us for the spiritual warfare we are surrounded by. Some of the things I expect to gain, and I, I give you these things as not only an opportunity for me personally to say what I expect, but also to give people maybe other thoughts about things they might expect from gatherings of this nature. First of all, I would like to mention that the Lord does, does watch over these times. He is very mindful of these gatherings. Uh, we know from Malachi when people would uh, gather together and speak to one another about the things of God that a book of remembrance was written. Uh, these are things to keep in mind when we gather at times like this. I expect to gain heavenly resources necessary for overcoming, exactly what some of the objectives were that we just listed. I expect to learn more about the promises and the commitments of God, a God who cannot lie. I expect to experience the unity of the Spirit and the body of peace. I don't expect to be distracted by my flesh. I don't expect to be distracted by the world. I expect the Lord to be watching over these things, maintaining a peace and unity among his body, that we might work together for a common good, that is the good of one another. I expect to meet others who declare plainly that they seek a country, and also to meet others who desire a better country, that is in heaven. I expect to meet with people of that caliber. I expect to appreciate more fully the circumcision of the heart that comes from God. It's not obtained by routine, it's not obtained by liturgy, but it is a circumcision from God. I expect to both have my hand strengthened in God and also to strengthen other people's hand in God. Uh, you recall Jonathan and David, although of opposing households, although Jonathan was the son of Saul who sought to kill David, they were able to meet together, and that was not a distraction. They were able to meet together and strengthen one another's hand in God. I expect to see more of the Savior who is both the Son of God and the Son of Man. I expect to gather daily that manna that is God's revelation. That's what I expect. I expect for our hearts to burn within us uh, while these ambassadors for Christ open unto us the scriptures. I expect to, for my heart to burn within me this week. I expect for my horizons and my understanding of the kingdom of God, uh, in particular the point of the knowledge of God, I expect that to broaden, but at the same time I expect ability to focus to grow greater.
remarkable thing. You can't claim this in the world. When you broaden things, generally uh, your focus is dissipated and diluted. But here in the kingdom of God, you can both broaden and, and sharpen your focus at the same time. Mm -hmm. I expect that to happen. I expect to be beckoned as John was to come up hither. That's what I expect this week. And in short, I expect to be refreshed, as the apostle said in Acts early on. I expect to be refreshed by the presence of the Lord. Because that's where those times of refreshing come are from the Lord. We'll now put the microphone in the center aisle and, and give you all an opportunity uh, to be a witness, not only to the men and women here, but also to the angels who are watching, and declare plainly what you seek to expect in these times. say that I'm really looking forward to hearing all of the men that's found upon the Word of God. One of the objectives, I think, in this meeting is to come to understand what it really means to walk with God. I reflect oftentimes upon the scriptures when it says, in Enoch, walked with God. And hopefully that is the objective of every one of us that all of us will go away with the kind of feeling that we should have concerning our God, our Christ, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I expect to see all of us leave here with a different attitude, a really different attitude, about what our relationship is to God. That's not taught much anymore, and we often forget. It's good to know, and we must all know, that our relationship to God is that He is our Father. Mm -hmm. And our Father. Jesus taught us to pray, our Father. He just didn't say, my Father. He said, our Father. Mm -hmm. We have a Father in heaven. And look what's so beautiful. Our brother is Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Judge. We can leave here knowing that within our heart will make a great deal of difference in our life. And we'll be on 